Hey, hey, what's going on? You got yourself another Whiskey Wednesday with your boy Cigar Rockstar. Please like, subscribe, share to Cigar Rockstar TV. You know what it is, man. Enough about me, though. I got to say my two cents. This week, this Whiskey Wednesday, we got TK on here, a.k.a. Mr. Black Smoke, a.k.a. Mr. Black Smoke Miami, Black Smoke Magazine, uh, Stogie. Like, like uh, the names go on and on and on. Um, TK, what's going on, bro? Good evening, everyone. And thank you. Thank you so much for um, allowing me to be a part of this amazing platform. Hope everyone is doing well and um, your family. Blessings to everyone. For sure, man. No, thank you, man. You're, you're a busy man. Uh, uh, I'm glad we finally get a chance to uh, meet up. I know uh, uh, we might as well just get right into it, man. So you look like you're sitting in the, um, the I know you you coming out with a lounge. Is this your new lounge? Is you you opening it up pretty soon? This is it. This is it right behind me. Look at that. I already got people moving in front of Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, hey, talk about your lounge a little bit. Where is it, where is it located? Have you had an official grand opening yet? Uh, this is located in Miami, my home, um, in the city of Wynwood, a very popular uh, entertainment district. And the grand opening will be February 20th during Black Smoke Miami, which is that Sunday, the day party, right here at the lounge. Oh man, oh man. Well, so what made? I mean, we 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 was rolling off script for a little bit, uh, off camera a little bit. So what 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 made you want to open a lounge? I mean, uh, you're everywhere. What what made you what made you want to open a lounge? And what, what's the name of it? Um, the name of the lounge is Black Smoke Social. Mm. And if I can show you this real quick here, this is the first AJ Lounge in the United States. Sponsored by AJ. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you the displays. Let's see if you guys can see it here. There we go. You see the displays on the wall? Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. Let's see if I can tilt it up a little bit. <laughs> Called AJ. So AJ sponsored the whole entire lounge. And if you look behind me, all the entire cigar shelving as well, all the displays, AJ, AJ. Man, man, that's that's awesome, man. So, so it, it sounds like you got a pretty good relationship with AJ. I do. Uh, AJ and I have been business partners for um, actually since 2016. Um, ever, ever since I'd done the tour with um, AJ in Nicaragua, I do a cigar yep. tours, the tobacco fields, and we've been tight ever since. Like he was, a, he was literally my first official uh, backing into the cigar industry when I was doing my Stogie TV. And this was when I was going to different lounges all around the United States, um, around the world, featuring tobacco products, cigar lounges and so forth, and individuals. And truth be told is I'm not getting any younger. Yeah. And I just wanted to open up a lounge and be, be done with it. All the advice I've given to countless cigar lounge owners, now it's my turn. Yeah, so so that, that's 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 great, man. Uh, it sounds like you're gonna maybe settle down a little bit and and and, uh, and black smoke social. But um, so let's, can you talk about that process a little bit from the time you said, "Hey, I want to open a lounge." Maybe you was eating lunch with AJ or something like that, or maybe you reached out to him. When did the idea come to your head from the from the time from then till February twentieth, the grand opening? Um. Oof. I would have to say, after visiting a few lounges after my first year of doing Stogie TV, I realized a lot of lounges owners are asking me different questions of customer service, interactions, whatever it may be. And literally brought to my attention, like, dude, you, you know a lot about business development, structure, this, that, and the other. Have you considered opening up your own lounge? And I was like, nah, I'm too busy. I'm running around this, running around that. And uh, over the years, some things happened. Um, some lounges, I didn't like them. Yeah. I didn't like them. I didn't like how some of the lounges were operating, meaning I'm from the cigar industry, okay? So when I go to a cigar lounge, I don't expect to be in a nightclub. And unfortunately, that has to be the new norm now. I agree. I agree. That's what it seems like. Let's say, hey, do what you need to do to keep your doors open. I get it. But for those who are from the industry, okay, the industry, we go to cigar lounges for cigars. 
Now, case in point, I got music on. You can barely hear it. I got, two, I got three meetings going on right now, and they're all discussing business. That's what I'm used to. Yeah. I provide an environment that is business friendly, where they can network, grow, exchange, ex, um, exchange information with each other and make money together in the black community or uh, any community for that matter. But the hub had to be built. And I got tired of featuring lounges that were converting into what they believe is a money maker. Yeah. yeah. By sacrificing the good old fashioned way of enjoying a cigar. So they took that away. I just got tired of seeing it. So what do you do if you don't like what you see, you know, it's 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. You never outshine the master, right? Yep. So what you do, you don't outshine the master. You don't like the table you're sitting at, get the fuck up, go build your own goddamn table. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's dope. That, that, that's life advice for anybody, man. That's, that, that's crazy. So what can, what can, um, what do, I, I guess in your words, uh, what do you want people to expect when they first walk into Black Smoke Social? That this lounge is just like me, strong as fuck, but rugged. <laughs> when you walk in, it is a warehouse. Um, I converted a warehouse into a cigar lounge, and I can give you a quick tour if you guys want to see it. Just give me the green light, and I'll make it happen. Um, yeah, we, a hot is like, hell yeah. <laughs> we got some yeses on here. Yeah, we got some yeses on here. All right, so I'm going to walk with the phone just to give you guys an idea, but my lounge is non-traditional. There's nothing normal about this lounge whatsoever. Um, it is a getaway. I am off the beaten path. I am not off the main road. You have to literally know where the hell you're going to get to my lounge. And it's a member's lounge. Was that, was Meaning, that on purpose? Or was that, did you, did you have did you put that, that type of location on purpose? Yes. On purpose. This is a member's lounge. We have the cigar wall here. We got the lounge behind me and you see all the AJ displays. And then let me see, let me turn this camera and make it a little easier on you. So you see the AJ displays, people enjoying themselves already. Dr. James, how are you? And now we're about to go outside. This is the patio area. All the outdoor seating. It's real beautiful, man. Hey, Bush, do me a favor. Plug that um, that that light up. Uh, the red lights outside. I'm gonna, guys, I gotta show you this. So I man, have the outdoor amazing. patio. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, so this is the outdoor patio. You guys see the inside. Now I'm gonna show you the heaven and hell garden. Right here, Bush. Right by the AC. Yeah, plug that up. I'm gonna show you the heaven and hell garden. So the heaven and hell garden is, is exactly what it is. Heaven and hell. Half of it's red, half of it's blue. And it represents that sometimes you start today going through hell. Sometimes you start today with hell. I'm a heaven. In my case, you go through both. You don't know what the fuck is going to happen. So here it is as you come out the patio area. Bistro lights. And then you make a left. Now we have the heaven and hell garden. Yo, that's, that's fire. <laughs> Dude, that's fire, man. Outdoor seating. So just oh. in case somebody wants to get away. Stop playing. You yeah. want to get away from everything else. You don't want to hear no music. You just come to the garden. You relax. And now we're entering hell. Yep. And even the pavers on the ground, the pavers on the ground, some of them are broken because it represents your life. Sometimes you go through life and you get broken. But even if you make it through hell, the end of the paver is whole. Yeah, that's our shit. Yeah, that's it. Man, that's dope, man. That's dope, man. Not that it means anything coming from me, but I'm proud of you, bro. Like, that's, 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 <laughs> means the world, man. Means that's the world. dope, man. That's it. dope. It's all love over thank here, you, man. Thank that's, you. That's great, man. That's great. Yeah, heaven so and hell garden. So, so this heaven and hell process. I mean, the, the whole design of it. Um, was that was that all you? I know you said you. Had, I think you, you had a team. Uh, is it is it mainly you making all the executive decisions? And what was your mindset behind designing the lounge that way? I know you, you said it's, 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 uh, it's not traditional. You kind of wanted it off the beaten path type thing. But 
as in the decor and all that, was that all you? Yes. In regards to the design and how I wanted it laid out, yes. Now, it was not all me putting it together, i tell you that. Of course. <laughs> Course. I've had some uh, great friends, family, of course, Ray, come out and get the hands dirty, drills, you name it, we, we got it in. Uh, when I got this unit, what you've seen, by the way, by the, um, all of you is only 45 days old. Uh, Collery can attest, he was here. What you're seeing is only 45 days old. I've had this unit for almost a year now. And when I got it, it was a homeless shelter, mechanic shop, welding shop, prostitution, drug hole, you name it, this is it. It was a complete shithole. It was a nuisance in the city of Miami's eyes. Uh, they had to go through the eviction process. There were squatters here and yeah. the water was cut off for the last 20 years. And they were here for the last 45 years. Complete oh, shitholes. As a matter of fact, right behind me, all of this was shit buckets, feces, dead dogs, dead cats. There are homeless people all sleeping inside. And this was the way it was for the 45 years. So when I got the key, the lease law was like, you, we wish you the best. Oh, I was like, man. don't worry about it. I got vision. I know what to do. You put yeah. some work in, man. You put some work in. That's crazy. So, you, so, so from it, it, so it took you maybe about forty-five days to get it. How we're looking now, or or what, no? What you're looking at is forty-five days old. Oh, so man. for the last year, we've been literally um, throwing away shit, demo demolition like crazy, mm -hmm. and now we have. A beautiful situation. Yeah, I'm not officially even, I don't even open up until the 20th and I already had five birthday parties here, two music videos shot here, a photo shoot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cabana so, sections. So, so, how, so how excited are you about February 20th, man? It, 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 that, that's going to be like the first look for, I mean, most of the world. Scared. <laughs> I'm expecting around 3,000 people. Oh, it's man. gonna be bananas. Hey, that's a beautiful problem it. to have, though. If, I, if if it is a problem, that's a beautiful problem to have. It is. It is. It's a it's a blessing, and I'm not even opened yet. And as you can see, they didn't. They're like, we don't care. They're coming in. Yeah. <laughs> So I know, I know a couple a couple guys on here maybe uh, that that had aspirations to open their own lounge, um, you know, in, in other states or whatever. How would you explain the process? Was it was it all? It was a headache. Was it was it exciting? Like how would you explain it, the process for you? Fucking headache and a beautiful process. I mean, I believe. Excuse me. I believe that the universe says, if "You want this? I'm going to give you it, but you're going to work for it." If you're not willing to work for this, you don't deserve this. Point wow. blank, just that simple. As a matter of fact, yeah, I'm gonna set up it. over here. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it for sure, for sure. So you, you mentioned uh, you met AJ back in 2016, 2017. Let's talk about the early days of TK, man. Like so, before 2016, 2017, like what, what were you doing? You said you was in the industry, you was going city to city. Like what, what were you doing? You know, how did you get into cigars? What were you doing before 2016, 2017? Oh man. I created, and let me know if it's too noisy, guys. In the background, let me know if it's too noisy. I'm, I'll move somewhere else. Is that good? Uh, I think we're good. We don't see no nods on here. I, I think we're good. All right. So I created Stogie TV um, in the early stages of Stogie TV. In the and early, we, sorry. We, in the we, early we, stages. What years was this? Like, can you give a little timeline? 2000. Oh, 2014, 15. Oh, is that? I didn't know it was that. Oh, I didn't know it was that at all. Yeah. Late, late 2013. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I realized I was look. I was going to lounges, and I was like, "Yo, these you guys are pretty cool lounges around here," but there was no platform for them to be seen. So I was like, "Let me grab a camera." Um, I had no idea how to film whatsoever, so I went yeah. to YouTube, learned how to film. Everybody went to YouTube University. Yeah. And now I, now I own a full scale film production, <laughs> drones and everything. Uh, but I started traveling and hey, and I was asking, I was like, hey, do you mind if I come to your lounge and film your cigar lounge? They're like, cool. And next thing you know, I'm filming, I'm filming, filming. Then I get um, events. There was no festivals at that time. There was no weeks at that time. It was the traditional 
cigar lounge events. And I would go to the cigar lounge events and start filming them on my little camera. And people actually started watching this stuff on YouTube. Next thing you know, I'm like, oh God, that's, that's a lot of views. And people started asking me questions. I was, like, I was like, oh shit, I think I created a monster here. Yeah. And that's how I found AJ, or rather AJ found me. I was at, I was at the Great Smoke in Boynton Beach here. I didn't know who AJ was. I was just at a festival, had no clue who, who AJ Fernandez was. And I hear my name in the background. I turn around and they're like, come over here, come over here. I go to the table and I say, hey, and this was before the beard. I was like, how can I help you? They say, hey, we love your show. We'd love to fly you to Nicaragua to go film AJ in Nicaragua. Are you kidding me? I'm like, man, are you talking to me? What? They said, yeah, they said, hey, come by, the, come by the warehouse, the headquarters next week. Bring your driver's license and your passport. Did it two weeks later? I'm on a plane in Nicaragua. Man, that's 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 man, that's insane, bro. It yeah, completely blew my mind. And going back to what you're saying about encouragement and inspiration, I didn't do Stogie TV with that intention. Like I said, I didn't even know who AJ was at that time. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, now I'm staying at his 14 bedroom mansion in Esley, Nicaragua, having access to all of this tobacco, access to all of this this madness and I turned that experience because people are like, hey, I want to go with you to Nicaragua. So I reached out to the AJ team and we worked it out. So now I literally own my own travel company where I take Americans to Nicaragua, AJ's facilities. You stay at his house with me, 14 bedroom mansion, and you get to smoke 20 cigars a day, tobacco fields, rollers, sorters, belongs, fermentation, the whole entire process, and it's a big ass mansion. And the way it's situated, all of the other brands live right next to you. So AJ lives here, Padron lives here, Pepin lives here, and they're all coming over having barbecues. <laughs> it's dope as shit. It's like the fucking cigar in heaven. What? Are you kidding me? Bro, that's that's a, it's off the chain. Hey, that's a dream, man. I mean, yeah. that, that's a dream. What, what? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, so I did my first tour. The, the Americans that I brought over from all over the United States, they had the time of their life. We went out to the city, we drank, we smoked, we laughed every day and hands on. You're in the fields, you're plucking tobacco fields, you're rolling cigars with AJ Fernandez, with me. I'm your tour guide during the whole entire project. It is a mind blowing experience. You'll never look at a cigar the same again after this experience. So, so, so one, one thing I say, you know, a little caption I have on the show is uh, cigars, uh, libations, uh, education, and conversations. So, so it, it, I, I, I want to say it feels like the more educated you are about the cigar or like at least from, you know, from seed to leaf to, to rolling and all that, maybe do you think you appreciate it more? Or do you think you think that uh, have you, you know, loving the cigar industry even more? Even more. As a matter of fact, I wasn't coming back. <laughs> I had everything I needed. <laughs> and not to mention that one American dollar is 33 over there. Oh, man. So I'm balling out of control. I'm yeah, smoking man. the best of the yeah, best. Man. I was already doing marketing for AJ. So the, I'm like, okay, the money's good. Like, And I was already staying at the a fucking 14 bedroom mansion next to a tobacco um, facility. So. Life's good, like, man. What? Life's good. Damn good. Yeah. yeah. That, that's dope, man. That's dope. That's that's unbelievable. So do you, so you still offer the tours and like how, like how does someone get ask about them? Like how how do they get in touch with you? Like how, how do they get more information or, or want to go on the tour? Yeah, that company is titled cigareducated.com. Mm. So on cigareducated.com, people can I mean literally go there and register for a tour which will resume in 2023. Do you do a couple of years? Is it one a year? How many do you do a year? I do one a year. I, I stay over there for three months. And the tour itself is three and a half days. So I literally take you to and from the airport every single week. So once you get on your plane, I'll wait for another hour for the next plane to land with the next tour. And then I um, we drive back into um, Esterly. Ah, wow. wow. Yeah, it's a three-hour drive from Managua through the mountains 
through the volcanoes. We got to pass Mama Thumbo. We have to pass Mumbacho. And we go into this beautiful city, very small, rugged. They're like, damn near 100 years behind us. And it's pure tobacco called Esteli. How, how's, the, how's, the, how's the culture there? Being beautiful, on the ground, beautiful, how's the culture? Beautiful. A lot of dudes ask me, hey, how's the women out there? How's the women? I say, well, I'm going to give you a disclaimer now. It's not DR. The moment you fly into DR, you got the condos, you got the beaches, you got the women. We going into the donkey fields. You feel me? <laughs> So it ain't what it, this is tobacco. This is like pure tobacco. So the women, yeah, there's the women out there and you're shit. It's probably 30 to one, but it's cultured women. They walk around with a flower in their hair. They walk around with the traditional long dresses. They're very, very cultured over there. So it's not they're the man's trip, if you would. It's tobacco. It's it's hardcore cigars, man. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. I I, I get it. So I mean, you was already in a tobacco. You know, you had Stogie, uh, Stogie TV. Um, you, you were traveling around the country, traveling around the world. Um, what would you say? Did you did you learn quite a bit going to Nicaragua? How was your perspective after you left Nicaragua? Well, outside of well, in the world of cigars, I mean, I was in, I was emotional. Damn, they're crying when I left. Crying when I got there. Damn, they're I'm. A tobacco field is a football field long. So you walk through the fields and you get lost in the tobacco. To me, tobacco talks to me. It talks, the leaves are talking. I'm immersed. You're in a, it's a to totally different experience. It's, you can't explain it. It's like going to Mount Olympus. It's an yeah. out of body experience. Yeah. And then I have a new appreciation for life because they're a, a developing country. Yep. The average pay is $2.50 a day. So you start to, you really appreciate life immediately. But at $2.50 a day, they're living the best life. Yeah. They're happy. eating the best foods. There's no preservatives. There's, for anybody who has left the country and you know you've eaten, eaten in another country, you eat damn good because it doesn't have the, the bullshit that we have in it. Yes. The culture when they were when they use the word friend over there, it means something. Versus word friend over here is Facebook friend. You might, nah, you might when not they, even know them. Nah. Yeah, yeah, over there, when they hug you, they hug you. When they call you friend, they call you friend. It, it has substance, it has meaning to it. And especially in the world of cigars, which is what they do over there. It's beautiful, it's it's mind blowing, it really is. You're silent. You're you're humbled immediately. You think you know cigars? You're not gonna say a damn thing when you get there. Yeah, yeah. You're so, blown so, away. You're blown. So, so, so you, you you got Estelle, You know, you got Jalapa. You got you know, you got Dr. You got all these all these regions of tobacco. You know what I mean? Outside of Nicaragua, of course, uh, as well. Um, um, what it, what have you been in any other countries? And if so. How did it compare to Nicaragua? Are, are you just like, you have this, this, this romantic relationship with Nicaragua because of AJ and your, your visit there? Or have you always liked Nicaraguan tobacco? Um, well, first of all, Leo, what's up, brother? <laughs> My man, Leo, yes. Yeah. I see you, Leo. Right, <laughs> and Candy, I see you too, Candy. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, to answer your question, um, I'm Haitian, by the way. Mm. And, and there's nothing compared to Haiti. Haiti is the first fourth world country. I mean, it's it's bad. It's it's you're not going to Haiti without crying. I mean, it's it, it's it's tear jerking. Um, so going to another developing country such as Nicaragua, it puts everything in perspective. Now, when it comes to the tobacco aspect of it, I'm a huge fan of Nicaraguan tobacco. Um. AJ did introduce the situation, but DR, Honduras also produce great tobacco, but I am partial to Nicaraguan tobacco. Understood. Yeah, I'm gonna come outside for a little bit. They're a little rowdy. Un un understood, yeah. understood. Yeah, man. cigar smokers, you know, yeah, these guys. <laughs> I mean, you know, you have, a, you have some libation, you have, you know, conversations sometimes, <laughs> you know. It's a good time, man, it's a good time. Yes, indeed. So I'm, I'm in hell right now. 
I see that, man. That, that's dope, man. So, of course, you know, this is Witchy Wednesday. With, with uh, We got TK, Mr. Black Smoke himself, Black Smoke Miami, Black Smoke Magazine, Stogie TV, uh, uh, TK Aficionado, all, all these names. Um, Tobacco <laughs> Kennedy, uh, of course. Um, Whiskey Wednesday with, 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 with the good, good, good fella. He's talking about, uh, we talked about Black Smoke Social, the lounge he just opened, the grand opening is February 20th. Uh, we talked about, you know, he started with AJ, and uh, he visited Phil's Nicaragua. He has a, 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 a tool company that he can take in Nicaragua once a year. Um, pretty dope. Let, let, let's, uh, the time is getting by us. I know, I know you're a busy man. So let, let, let's roll into Black Smoke Miami. Um, um, Black Smoke Miami, this is, this is year what? Uh, I don't even, what? What year is this for Black Smoke Miami? Year number five. Uh, it, oh, man. Year number five. Year number you're making, five. You're making your way, bro. You're making your way. And this is going to be. This one's going to be the biggest one of all. Uh, I was going to say, I was going to say, this is, uh, you know, half a decade. Is there, is there, you pulling out all the tricks for the five year mark? This one's going to be stupid. <laughs> Tickets were sold out five months ago. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Post Hotel sold out four months ago. This is going to be bananas, man. Um, that's, and it's a beautiful great. thing. Yeah, that's it, great. It really that's is. So, so can you can you pinpoint that? I'm asking about the dates, man, because I, I I've, I've personally seen them change a couple times. Um, uh, the, the, what are the dates for uh, Black Smoke Miami? The official dates of Black Smoke Miami are February 16th through the 20th, and I had to change them because of the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl kept changing their goddamn dates, and I'm like, make up yeah. your damn minds, man. So I can, because Will Will brought it to my attention. Will called me, he's like, I change that shit. We're going to the Super Bowl, and we all want to miss Black Smoke Miami. So I was like. <laughs> So I was like, all right, well, done. It's changed. <laughs> <laughs> so 16th through the 20th, uh, it, it's going to be great. Uh, we start off at Ashes Cigar Lounge down south. Thursday, we're in Brickell, for those who know the area. Friday and Saturday is pretty much the concert series at a very large venue down here in downtown Miami. And then Sunday is the all-day party right here at my lounge in Pig Roast. Pig Roast and Domino Tournament um, with um, Dallas Lee and Collery. Uh, Collery's brand is, uh, is definitely a, a strong, strong supporter and sponsor of the situation. And um, I'll tell you, without um, Collery, brothers like Collery, uh, Black Smoke Man wouldn't exist because without those sponsorships, without those contributions to bring it to life and it just wouldn't happen. So, Collery, thank you for your contribution and your partnership with Black Smoke Miami. And I look forward to doing many, many more years with you. No, shout thank you. John, bro. Shout thank out you. to John Collery and, uh, and uh, uh, Tampa Cigar Week coming up in March. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I, I, I will be there for that one. Can't wait. Let's do it. All right. So, so TK, man, let's talk about Black Smoke a little bit. Uh, uh, how has it changed? Uh, let, let's talk about year one, a little bit of history real quick. Like year, year one, um, wh what made you do uh, a Black Smoke Miami? And, and why call it Black Smoke Miami? Because we had no representation. Yeah. I would go around uh, IPCPR. Uh, now it's called PCA. So PCA, yep. yep. But at um, IPCPR, you can literally pinpoint all three of us walking around the trade floor. There was no representation whatsoever. Then the following year, then you saw a few more spots of us. Then we kind of grew, and I, I saw some industry waves that I didn't like. We weren't the priority, and I had to prove to them that we were the priority. And every time I made a phone call, every time I made an email, like, "Hey, we can do this. They can do that." I always got the the shoulder. I always got the and eh, we'll get back to you. Eh, we don't know. Eh, we'll see about it. No reply is your fucking reply. Yeah. Bottom line. So I had to go digging their ass for that. Yeah. I said, you know what? I'm tired of asking you these um these goddamn questions. I'm tired of asking you to go feature this this situation. I'm tired of you not allowing us to be behind the register. You always want us in front of the register, but you don't want us behind the register. Yeah. I said, you know what? I'm gonna flip the game on your ass. So I created Black Smoke Miami to recognize and to feature Black lounges, Black accessory owners, Black influencers. There was a whole gang of them, but there was no platform. There was no wheat out there. Black Smoke Miami was the first 
ever black festival ever to do it. No one ever dared to do it because they didn't want to use the word black. Some of people yeah. were telling me, hey, use the word ebony. Be nice with it. Call it Miami Noir. Like, <laughs> fuck out of here. Black smoke Miami. I'm from Miami. I'm black and I smoke. Done. End of story. Yeah. Yeah. And the first year I had 800 attendees. Oh, that's great, man. Second year, the shit jumped. I mean, to the point where we're 6,500 attendees. What? And I don't brag about Black Smoke because of the attendees. I brag because there was great people with great intentions. Yeah. We finally had a platform where we can see other Black-owned businesses in the industry. Like, hey, I didn't know you owned a lounge in Missouri. Or I didn't know you owned a lounge in Baltimore. Or I didn't know you had a podcast. Or I didn't know you had this. There was no hub for all of us to come together to do that. That was the premise of Black Smoke Miami. Yeah. And then, of course, I got the backlash. Oh, you calling the black, your race. I was like, man, fuck you. Get my <laughs> ass because you didn't question that shit when you, like me, I'm a capital. That's a black frat. So you're going to go after the capitals for, for, for being a black frat? You're going to call every every HBCU and they say, well, you shouldn't be a historically black college or university. And I'm like, get off my shit. That's a good now, point. If you want to. That's a good are point. you jealous? Yeah. Listen, I I cut through the chase. I, I, I see the bullshit a mile away. You didn't want blacks to come up. It is what it is. We're here now. Just like um, said it in the and it said, bitch, you going to the moon? We're going to the moon with you. You, you can't get rid of us. We're here. <laughs> so after that just, first after that first year, you got, you know, I guess a little bit of taste of the Kool-Aid. Did, did that drive you more to, to do better every year? Or, or, or like how was that how was that first year on you? Was it obviously it was a success, but how was your mental after that first year? A little, little cockiness in you? Oh, I was fucked up. <laughs> I was fucked up. I didn't know what the hell I just did. I it's didn't played. even yeah, see the, the domino effect of what just happened. I was in limbo. Like what? Like did I do something good or did I did I do something bad? Like whoa, what what the hell just happened here? For the most part, it was good. For the most part, and I realized it. Yes, it was not perfect, and there was a lot of moving parts that had to be addressed. There's a lot of, anytime anyone um, who is a, a promoter or an event planner, there's a lot of little nuances that yep. you will have to address. And if you don't, that's fine, because you will grow and you get better year by year. There's always room for improvement. No matter what you do, there's always room for improvement. Uh, but surprisingly, it was some backlash from the black community. Nah, I ain't going to that nigga shit. <laughs> I was like, oh. Well, of course. Of course. Oh, so I yeah. got some coons. You know, one thing I can't stand is a fucking coon. I'm like, oh, wow. It, it was shocking. You know what yeah. I mean? And there's some people that we do know. Case in point, I won't even mention his name. I won't even mention the brand name. But that person still has a job because of me. That brand was like, do you like this person? Because we don't know. Should we get rid of him? I was like, uh, let him grow a little bit. Let him... Let them understand. Keep them on board. Yeah. But that same individual was the one I found out who was bad, uh, talking, you know, speaking bad on, on Black Smoke Miami. Mm. And I could have been vindictive. Yeah, you could, I could have. But yeah, you, you you're can't wrong, go you're, after. You're man, right, you can't go after everybody. Yeah. What you, I, mean, I mean, I love the fight. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm from Miami, <laughs> so it's, it, it is what it is. <laughs> but what am I supposed to do? Go beat up everyone or go fight everyone who has something negative to say about my event? No matter where we are, no matter who we are, no matter what we do, there's always going to be a complaint. You can't keep everyone happy, can't satisfy everyone. And there's always a hidden agenda. Understand that everyone in here, there is always a hidden agenda. If someone has anything to say about you, they either want you or they want to be you. Yeah. So yeah. there is, let me look deeper into this. Oh, shit, that's, oh. And then, of course, you have those people who say, well, I've been to Black Smoke Miami. I can do what he did. Well, you can't because your heart is not in the right place. Your intention 
yeah. is not in the right place. Yeah. The, it's not about the culture. It's not about the industry. Preach. It's about me. I'm going to throw this big ass party. Preach, preach, so preach. Go ahead and do that. Do me a favor. Remove the word cigar and throw your big ass party. You know what I'm saying if it's about yeah. the culture, then make it about the culture and trust. I, oh, by the way, spoil alert, spoil alert on February 19th at Black Smoke Miami on that Saturday. All of this shit you see out here, all of these weeks and stuff, <laughs> I'm going to make an announcement on Saturday night on stage in front of everyone that's going to drop everyone's jaw. That is never, ever been done before. And it's going to shock the entire industry. Mind oh, blowing. Man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, get, to, get, get the Black Smoke Miami on, on uh, Saturday, uh, February 19th. <laughs> when I tell you, you, oh, you're going to get the calls. Rockstar, did you hear what this motherfucker just did? <laughs> So you, you mentioned tickets were already sold out, you know, for the last four or five months. Is, so if, is there still a way for people who maybe had missed a chance to come to buy a ticket? Is there still a way for people to, to, to uh, come to Black Smoke Miami? Black Smoke Miami is a free event this go around um, because I'm not charging people to come into my lounge. That mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. I have a VIP all inclusive package. That's what they did. That package sold out four months ago. It's still an open platform. It's still an open to the public event. It's just when people do arrive, they pay for cigars on site. They can pay for their drinks on site. They can pay for merchandise on site. It's yeah. open to the public. It's just that all inclusive package, which a lot of people enjoy. They don't want to pay for cigars on site. They just want all yep. their shit up front. Yep. And it's available. Yep. Well, it was available. Yep. Don't worry, right. Will. I, 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 I got your spot, Will. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's great. That, that's great man so so i mean we we, we got you know so tv we, we got we got young tk on, on youtube going to nicaragua and all that still, still does still does still does um um fifth year black smoke man february 16th to 20th um the, the end is at the grand opening of the black grand smoke opening. social black yeah. smoke social that is owned by tk um that's right that's dope. So, so let, let's uh, let, let's uh, let's get into um Black Smoke Magazine a little bit, man. That, that's that's really what we do. Um, Black Smoke Magazine. Yeah, let, let's talk about Black Smoke Magazine. So I did see the 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 I guess the first edition with the beautiful Christine, the absolutely yes. amazingly beautiful Christine. Like, how did Black Smoke Magazine come to you, come to your head? Like, hey, I want to create a magazine. Because these other motherfuckers weren't featuring us. They don't want to cover us. It is what it is. Yeah. I won't be. I won't hide the situation i called emailed spoke i said hey i got a great idea i think we should do something publication wise feature this situation feature that situation and it was like eh, eh if they got a if they have an event they can send us pictures i'm like oh that's how you want to treat us not a problem i got something for your ass black smoke magazine the first ever black owned cigar magazine in the industry that features the industry, the culture, and the lifestyle of people of color that enjoy cigars. Mm -hmm. Rightfully so, Christine Morgan, queen of the South, icon, icon yes. in the cigar industry and what yes. she has done as a double minority. Yes, yes. Killing the game. Yes. And then you see people um, who are featured on, you're like, damn, I didn't even know we had Greeks that owned their own product. Oh, I didn't even know that there was a cigar lounge in Memphis that were black owned. Oh, I didn't, that's, this whole magazine is all about the culture, all about the industry, all about the movement of individuals like yourselves and individuals that are on this platform. It doesn't have to be cigar related. You just may enjoy a cigar and you, you're a doctor. You, you know what I mean? You, 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 you don't even need to have a title. You just enjoy cigars. I'm gonna hear from you. Um, I, I got Susie, Susie Mooney was featured in the magazine. Yep. from a ptsd perspective yep. I'm, I'm a veteran so, so i respect that a lot i, I read it, and oh, it was, thank yeah. you yeah yeah thank yep. you to all my veterans thank you for your service i mean who is going to feature her and other veterans and other people who use cigars as a segue to cope with P, uh, ptsd mm -hmm. it is what it is 
Mm -hmm. They weren't featuring us. We didn't have equality. I took the leap of faith. Fuck it. Black Smoke Magazine. And it's here to stay. Now, the first inaugural issue that came out, that issue, whoever has it, that's a collector's item. It is no longer available for print to the public. That is done, finished, out of print, no more. So it is an official collector's item. The next issue comes out in April. Now, so, those so will be is, available to the public. So is, is this, um, is, it, is, it, is it quarterly? Is it quarterly issues? Yes. Okay. Yes, but that first issue, no longer available. Man, hold on to that. Hey, that cover is fire too, boy. Woo! Yeah, Christine is... Let me, let me stop before I get mode. slapped by somebody, but you know... <laughs> before you get that call from Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Anyway. Oh, she's a sweetheart. She's a yeah, sweetheart. Yeah, she's, she's dope. She's dope. And she is definitely a, a true inspiration to me and to so many others. Just, just what a beautiful spirit this young lady is. For, for sure. Carter, how do you... Shout out to Christine Morgan uh, and on Instagram. It's, it's lipsticks and fingertips. She has a mobile cigar lounge out of Atlanta, Georgia area. Um, shout out to Christine, man. She's beautiful inside and out for sure. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely a great first pick, man. That's, that's dope. So, I mean, I mean the, the magazine, like so from the idea, he was like, Hey, I want, I want to do you know more focus on my people more from the, that, that inaugural idea to the first publication of the magazine. Talk about that process a little bit. Like uh, what, how long did that take? And, and, and was it as easy as hard as you thought? It was difficult because of what I was juggling at the time. I launched a magazine, built out the Cigar Lounge, and prepared Black Smoke Miami all at the same time. Mm. 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 Most people so, um, on the outside don't, don't understand the, the headaches yeah. of that. Uh, people just usually, consumers, I guess I would say, no disrespect, I don't know what else to call them, uh, people who want to enjoy, enjoy it, they come, they enjoy it. They don't see behind the closed door. They don't see what you go through. They don't, they don't yeah. see all that. They don't see the, the laughs and the tears. You know what I mean? They, they, don't, they don't see that. Um, right. and, and they definitely, uh, you you put on great things, man. You put on great things, for sure. I greatly appreciate it. I've, I've been blessed uh, to be in those positions to do that. And I know what my calling is. My calling is to help people grow through the world of cigars. So, so like, how do people um, subscribe or, or get a Black Smoke Magazine edition? Like, uh, and, and can you talk about maybe some numbers a little bit or, or whatever, maybe? Sure. They'll be able to, anyone who is looking to subscribe, will be able to go to blacksmokemagazine.com and have an annual subscription option. And that magazine will be shipped to their house. And there is also a digital download for them as well. That's dope. That's dope. And it's available coolly. Yeah, man, that's, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So, like, man... <laughs> Yeah, man, bro. You, you got yeah, you, bro. You, <laughs> I'm, I'm just where, getting a warm up. Fact, let me let me open the floor up for quick. I don't, need, I don't even know where I'm gonna go, man. Like it's it's like I I'm inspired. Uh, I'm I got questions. Uh, you know, it's it, you're a dope brother, man. You're a dope brother. But I want to open the floor up for questions, man. Uh, we've been talking for a minute now. Let's let's get some questions in here. Right. Leo, let me give you a shout out, Leo. I know you say what's up to you. Uh, uh, Leo, what's going on, bro? How you doing? What's up, man? Everything's all good, man. Glad to see my brother TK on here. Uh, you know. I've been following TK for a long time, man. I mean, you know, he was talking about he was Haitian. I was just sitting there talking to Candy. That's really, I think, when our first conversation started, he was in the streets of Miami, and I was asking him, like, what's going on? This was, like, years ago. And he was saying that, uh, I forgot, that somebody had gotten overthrown in Haiti or something like that. And, uh, you know, I think that's when we really started conversing, man. And, and I must say, and I always give props where props are due. And TK knows what I'm about to say, I think. I called him because I followed him in Stogie TV and I said, hey man, I wanna do something like this. And I just wanna make sure that I'm talking to you because you're on the East Coast, I'm on the West Coast at the time. I said, I think that this is something that we can do, you know, to kind of bring us together on both ends. And he said, do it. You know, the other thing that I did, I must say is that I learned from TK too, which I did this and I'm still doing it. One of the big things that I learned from him was on one of his uh, lives on Facebook. He said, if you want to be in this industry, you got to do two things. Get behind the register, learn your products. Once you can do that, then you can do something. Instead, being on the other side, just talking shit, mm. now you understand the shit. 
-hmm. Learn how to do inventory, learn how to talk to the reps, learn how to talk to the owners of the companies and manufacturers and get to know the factories. You know, there's so much that I've learned from this man and, and I learned from him. I'm still learning. Uh, I, I applaud everything that he's doing, man. I mean, but if you guys want to know, you know, how to do it the right way, uh, it, he's a great example. And I followed his example. And my brother, you know, you know, I love you. You know, I love you. Yeah, much love, good brother. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leo. <laughs> And then I love your platform. And Leo's taught me so much about, uh, man, his, his knowledge of beer, bourbon, whiskey. Blows man, my mind. Man, a monster with that. Blows my mind. I know. I'm with it. You know what I mean? I'm with it. And, you know, and you by the way, thanks for putting me in the inaugural issue. Thank you. That was, man, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Thank you that's for dope. allowing me to work with you, good brother. Man, you know, anytime. But we got some things to talk about because we got some things that I want to share with you. Oh, you better believe it, boy. I got some shit coming down the pipeline, boy. Get ready. I got, I'm not I, even get warmed up yet. It's going I got down. The I got the coffee for you. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> mark my word. Everyone on this platform tonight, mark my word. There are four announcements I will be making this year that is groundbreaking for people of color internationally i'm telling you you fuck with me we go the long way you don't fuck with me go your way word that's dope we're gonna that's do dope. this hey, hey, Stogie, man i think i think you had your hand up Sogi, uh so the bear uh will 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 watts you you muted bro you muted I I got you Forbes. Uh, let me let me get uh, the other world first. <laughs> mm. Looks like he pushed the wrong button. <laughs> 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 hey Forbes, what's up, bro? We got another brother from the West Coast out there. Uh, Forbes, what's going on, sir? You can't unmute either. Oh, sorry. There we hey, go. There we go. All right. You remember what I said to you when I met you in Florida? I said, man, I got to get a picture with you because you about to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, when I hear stuff like that, I, it, it, it humbles me. It, um, it makes me smile for sure because I, I don't smile much. So when people do appreciate the effort that has been put in, I, I take that to heart. And that's somebody I, I consider a friend. Uh, so thank you so very much, Brother Forbes. Um, and I look forward to taking more pictures with you and, you know, say, hey, let, let's make it happen. Um, and let's grab a drink and a smoke next time. There you go. There you go. Hey, Stoey, what's up, bro? You, I think, you, I think you, uh, you, you got some Audible now. Oh, Stoey, you messing up, bro. I can't, can anybody hear Stoey? <laughs> I don't even know how to teach him how to do it. Hey, go push the microphone, and it should tell you to connect to uh, uh, your phone's <laughs> audio. I think I think that's what it is. I'm on computer, but I think it's it, I think it'll give you an option to connect the phone audio. And why, 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 why we wait? Why we waiting for Will to uh, uh, to get it right? <laughs> let, me, right. let me say what's up to uh, Housewife. What's going on, Alicia? Alicia McGee. What's going on, man? I'm just chilling. Good evening, Alicia. What's happening? Hey, TK, my buddy. <laughs> I'm, I'm the hardest working man in this industry. I, I, was, oh, gonna say, I, was, I was gonna say. I gonna say that. I was like, he, he, he man. Might, he might when I the... tell you, this guy, I don't understand how he does it and still be sane. He does so much. It was just, it was mind blowing. I'm, I'm just looking like. Yeah, but I got a chance to bring my birthday in with celebrating with them guys. It, it was cool. Thank you kindly, and um, it was a pleasure and a blessing. And I hope that I can continue just to do the best that I can, and that um, oh yeah, you know, just just try to do what I do from the heart. Yes, from the heart reaches the heart. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, that's that's great. That's great. Will you want to give another shot, Will? Uh, uh, Sogi, Sogi the Bear. (laughs) 
Can you hear me? There you go. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Hey, <laughs> okay, hey. <laughs> I kept hitting the wrong button. It, uh, check it out, man. Me and TK go back like four flats on the Cadillac. Yes, indeed. Uh, after Miami Smoke 2, when I came. Are you kind of, are you kind of low, so you can either speak up or talking to the mic more or something? Uh, you, I'm having trouble hearing you on my, on my end. Okay. Uh, after Black Smoke Miami 2, you know, it, it was growing pain for him. So I reached out to him and he was like, uh, yeah, so I would get back with you. I thought he would push me off, but he didn't. The thing about TK is like he said, he's a humble dude. If you're not humble, then appreciative about what you're doing to uplift the culture and uplift the people, you're not going to grow. TK never went live on nobody but complaining about black smoke. You had to respect that. We ran into each other in LA. And I walked up to him. I said, brother, you know what? I got mad love and respect for you because, one, you respect the culture and you don't go live on people. And, you know, our confrontation right there meant a lot. A dude is cool. He ain't as cool as me because I'm the funky motherfucker. Right? <laughs> you know, if he call, I answer. It's only certain people that I will answer to when they call in the cigar industry. If he asks me to do something, he needs some help, I'm there. I called him for advice on a certain situation coming up. And he was the first one to say, man, listen, I want to be a sponsor on this level. That's right. Let's rock and roll. That's all it takes. You know, you got to be a, a humbled in this industry. And the truth is, think about our black folks uplifting each other in this thing. Yes, everybody don't smoke Cuban. Share your knowledge with them about different cigars. Make their taste buds and their palate change. That's what uh, Stogie TV was about. That's what Black Smoke uh, Miami is about. So TK, I'll see you this week. Just be ready. That's the best part. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. One love. We got a lot of work to do. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, Stogie. Appreciate you, Stogie. Too bad them, uh, them, them Raiders ain't, ain't, ain't go all the way, but... Uh, hey, next right. year, next year. We're we, we, we going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Neither did Dallas. So. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> no play. Ray, you hear that? Raiders going to be all right. Oh, yeah, we all right. That's Who's right. That's right. In, in Las Vegas. No, they... No, they... No, they... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta give a couple more shout outs to some, some I gotta give a couple more shout outs to some folks that came in. Um um traveling cigars, what's going on, sir? The Mohawk is sitting tall tonight. You know, I had to represent when I went bowling, so because <laughs> <laughs> then you well, can always blame if you suck wind, you can blame it on the hair. There you go. What's going there on, good go. brother? It's all good, my friend. Good to see you. Always, always a pleasure to see you, my friend. I was going to say, Rob, you spent a lot of time in Miami. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you smoked a couple with TK by now. Yes, yes, yes. Just I think last time, was at, yeah, last time was at Empire, right? Upstairs? Yep. Yeah. That's dope, that's dope. And, uh, of course, we got Rack. What's going on, Eric? Rack, Racklin. What's going on, gentlemen? How y'all doing? And ladies, I had a little technical difficulties. That's why it took me so long to get on. All right, Rack, what's happening? I'm good, brother. How are you? All is blessed. All is blessed. Will hit me up earlier and said it was a good show, so I've been stressing to get on. I'm, I'm here now. Just smoke and drink. There it is. That's all that matters. Word. We well, appreciate you stopping in, man. We, so, so, so uh, TK, there's a, a pretty good West Coast uh, uh, affiliates in here. Uh, Will and also Rack, they're from West Coast. And Leo, by default, uh, used to be West Coast, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you coast to coast, TK. You coast to coast, man. You got fans coast to coast, coast to coast, bro. Uh, it's listen. It's it's a blessing uh, to have people who enjoy the platform. And listen, I just hope that I can help inspire, motivate in these turbulent times that we live in. We need all the inspiration, motivation, and direction that we can get. So if I can be that vessel uh, from above and I'll continue to do so. So thank you for those near and far uh, for continuing to support uh, what I do. Thank you. 
I, I agree. I agree. Leo, give me one second, bro. I see you. Um, so, so uh, TK, man, uh, so uh, McGee, Alicia McGee, housewife said it uh, before I could say it, uh, maybe one of the hardest men in the cigar, hardest working men in, in the cigar industry. What do you, why, what do you owe your worth ethic to? What do you, what do you owe your morals? Like your, your upbringing, like, what do you owe that to? Did, did you have, uh, did you look up to somebody? Maybe AJ might be one uh, or does it come earlier than that? Like, like, what do you owe your successes to? Oh man. Um, First God, and I'm not speaking from the church perspective because I don't go to church, so let's leave that at the box. Yeah. Um, I, my deity, um, we have weird-ass conversations. I mean, I just do what he tells me to do. And industry-wise, as far as role models, there's a long list, a long list of people who have influenced me to do what I do. Uh, my best friend, Alonzo, gave me my first cigar ever. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I told him I would never smoke a cigar. He's like, one day you will. I was like, fuck no. Next thing you know, I'm smoking. <laughs> what, was your, what, was your, what was your first cigar, TK? Oh, man. Shit. Uh, oh, what was, I guess what's the first one you can remember that was like, you hit it, you was like, man, this is, this is a beautiful thing. It was Pride. P-R-I-D-E. Pride Cigars by for those who know Lawrence from Kubanakan a um, good friend of mine but I had no idea that he made the brand it was a Connecticut it was the lightest of the light in the cigar lounge I enjoyed it because I didn't know that I said this is what I've been missing out on the whole time he's like see I told you so me and Lawrence became friends years years after I smoked my first cigar and I'm in his headquarters and he has a cigar on his wall. I'm like, is that what I think it is? He's like, what is that? I'm like, that's pride. It's like, yeah, what about it? That's one of my first cigars. I'm like, dude, that was my first cigar. He turned you out. He turned you out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, look at that, man. Look, look at how, how beautiful that is. It just came full circle. So that, that's how it all started. Yeah, that's that's great, man. That's great. That's crazy. He, 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 yeah, he turned you out, though. He got... <laughs> yeah, Lord. Yeah, I'm BS, man. I'm, I'm, I'm no playing with now. Yeah. <laughs> All gas, no brakes. No yeah, brakes. <laughs> Leo, man, I saw you had your hand up, bro. Yeah, I, I was just uh, wondering. I didn't know if you had already went into Cigar Educated. Uh, you know, Cigar Educated, you know, great platform. I remember when TK was, you know, putting it together. You know, he gave me a call and stuff like that. But I just, I didn't know if you had already talked about it or not. That's all. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, uh, um, it, I mean, like, how familiar are you with uh, Cigar Educated, Leo? Real familiar with it. Uh, TK actually hit me up early on when he was putting it together in the beta form. Um, you know, it was, right. uh, it was, it, it's because I know he and I, we were talking and I, I wanted to go through uh, tobacco, uh, tobacco in his university, which I actually went through and did that. Uh, I also did TK's like right after I did that. Um, I think that it's a, a much better platform um, for the everyday aficionado I won't say consumer because there's some knowledge that you do need to have there's some things that you need to understand it puts you in a different plat uh, not platform but it puts you in a different perspective about the entire cigar world and tobacco world you know I mean I know we all talk about community and I have this thing about community there's a difference in the community uh, when we talk in tobacco and cigars because there is the actual tobacco community the people that actually do the farming, they do the they do the curing, they do all the all the things that are necessary in the factories. But then there's a community of what we know. Uh, sorry to say, but it's like that party aspect, you know, mm. That's a community. Mm -hmm. So what TK mm -hmm. did with Cigar Educated was to give you the real understanding about tobacco in a much easier form, but it's also a certification. So yeah. that's the big thing about it. You get yeah. certified. So if you haven't done it. I advise you all to do it. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Rack. I see you, Rack. TK, we've never met, but now I hear uh, uh, Leo Brown speaking, and I came in a little late, but you do like a tobacco, tobacco I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, like, a, like a university or education of some, of some nature. So Absolutely, remember, yes. So I remember maybe a year or two ago, you was, when you was talking about it, 
you was in a, in a in a lounge somewhere with another gentleman. You have a you have a lounge or something of that nature. I have a lounge now. Okay, well, I, well, you, I remember you talking about it, and, and you was in the lounge, and it was a bunch of cigars around you, a bunch of rap people was rapping and rolling, and you was talking about it. And I think you offered like a hundred bucks or something like that to join or, or do it now before it got big. Yeah, and I'm like, man, I don't. At that time, I wasn't uh, into cigars as much as I am now. But brother, not, I, I mean, it's coming full circle now. Just hearing brother when he said education, and then I, I remembered you. So I just want to say. I don't know what I want to say other than congratulations, brother, because you was talking about it a while ago, man. I remember hearing about this a while ago, man. And now I, I, I understand that, you know, it, it's come to fruition. Thank so, you. Thank you. Congratulations, brother. I wish I'd, I wish I'd have split that hundred dollars because I'm sure it's a lot more now. <laughs> <laughs> I greatly appreciate it. And no, um, price it in braids is as a matter of fact, uh, the price actually dropped. Uh, so yeah, oh, let me know. I'll be more than happy to add you to the platform. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I mean, I'm, education is key, brother. Indeed, it is. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's dope, man. That's dope. Education is very important. Um, that I mean, I, I mentioned it before. The, the, so one of the taglines I have is cigars, education, libations, and conversations. And and um, I mean, that's what it is, man. We smoking, we chilling, we we, we drinking, and uh, we getting educated. So the, I'm, I'm I'm definitely all about it. Now your education is a little bit different platform than, than what I could do, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but uh, but it's dope. So so let me let me let me go into. Uh, I see I'm looking at Kia Watts right now for some reason. She's next to my screen. So I wanted to um talk about conscious cigars a little bit and talk about um you have different categories for Black Smoke, uh, Miami. As in um I think what maybe best voted best cigar, uh like best podcast, best uh, lounge and all that. Um you have a few categories. Like what what made you come out with those categories and like like how does that did, like the people just sign themselves up? For the categories, uh, which is for the Black Smoke Awards. Mm -hmm. So the Black Smoke Awards, when I say that thing is so deep, the award system, because what, what it does is it takes that respected business or even those people who are nominated to the next level. Keep in mind, before Black Smoke Awards, there was no awards for Blacks. Mm. There was no Best Lounge. There was no SOTL. There was no BOTL. There was nothing to give us some form of recognition. There was no form of, yes, your lounge should be in the top three. There was none of that. And if you go back inside, grab me another stick. There was none of that. And I knew some great people who have great lounges, who have great shirt companies, great accessory companies. And I'm like, we're never given a chance. So I was like, you know what? Once again, here we go. Take a leap of faith. Fuck it, Black Smoke Awards. Now that first cigar lounge that won Cigar Lounge of the Year in the United States, mm -hmm. they could take that award, they could take that beautiful glass trophy and place it on a counter in their local community and be recognized for the mm -hmm. greatness that they do mm -hmm. in the culture, in the community, in the industry. And now it's just, it's just bigger than ever. Yeah. Yeah, and it good. means it means something. It, it's valid if you want a Black Smoke Award, like you, you, it means a lot to the culture. It means a lot to the industry. It means a lot for Black power, Black empowerment, Black entrepreneurship, Black yep. business. Go down the list. Go down yep. the list. But before the awards, there was no platform to say that young lady in that respected city who's doing that. When is she going to be recognized? When she's dead? Yeah. You're going to wait to give her her flowers after the fact? That, that's you're usually, gonna that, name, that, you're that's, name it. Sadly, that's usually how it goes. Sad, sadly, that's, that's, you know, that's usually how it goes. Yeah, fuck that. We're going to do it now. And yeah. there, is, there is a long list of phenomenal people. Listen, just the fact that the top three, even if that person didn't win that first place, whatever it is, the fact that you're in the top three, there's a whole article, there's a whole magazine feature on that alone, that this is the top three Black-owned cigar lounges in the United States. Yeah. That alone is mind-blowing. So the so top can we, can we, three Black-owned cigars, yeah. mind-blowing. And, and it's a lot of personal pride. Like I, I mentioned Tommy earlier, Kinoma, he, he takes a lot, a lot, a lot of pride of being the finalist. 
he takes a lot of pride. You know what I mean? And so, so it's a beautiful thing. It, it, it's a beautiful thing. And, and, and TK, man, I might have to get with you, man, to see who the past winners are. Maybe I can put them on the show. We could talk about some things and how they feel about it and stuff like that. Um, Absolutely. But, but, but yeah, that's, 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 that, that's great. So ex- explain the, the process a little bit. Is it, is it, is it, is it literally uh, people voting on the best one or, or is it like, how, how, how does someone become the, a finalist and become the more, is it literally people voting? Is it, is, is all it takes? People Choice Awards. Let the people vote. Oh man, that's beautiful. I remember the first, uh, the first cigar lounge that won. Like assuming state Doc from Two Ten in Baltimore, or sorry, uh, what they call um, down the PG County, if you would. He won, and people were, were actually saying, "No, that that shop shouldn't have won. My shop should have won because I, I have." High end this, or I have an elevator, or I have a rooftop that overlooks the city. That don't mean nothing. I'm not mean a goddamn thing. Nope. Let the people decide. And I told that same person, well, what's the name of that lounge since you're bragging about it? Well, go, I go back to the votes. I'm like, well, shit, you only had two goddamn votes anyway. <laughs> go back to your lounge and go curse out everybody in that lounge who didn't fucking vote for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be done with it. For sure. So that lounge that has two chairs in the corner. But you can go there because it's it's home to you. It, it, it helps you decompress. It helps you stay sane. Then that's the motherfucking lounge of the year. That's right back here. Yeah. Let the people vote. Let the people decide people's choice. what's what. People it don't get a, it don't get no better than that. People's choice for sure. That's it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I got. I'd be remiss. For, um, shout out my brother that's joined here. What's going on, Jameson? What's, what's going on with you tonight, bro? How you doing? Well, man, uh, can y'all hear me? It's like loud. Yeah, yeah you got quite a bit of background. We can hear this though. Hey, man, it's, it's crazy. So I'm in uh, Jay's uh, Cigars in um, in Atlanta, and um, you know it took a minute, you know, to get on here. So I apologize. TK, what up though, man? We Your brother, a, how are you? We have a lot to do in a short amount of time, but we're gonna get it done. All right. All What's going on, everybody? All right, man. All right. Living the dream. Living the dream. Appreciate you, Jay. Thanks for joining, man. Thanks for joining. Yo, yo, so CK, let me let me let me get some recognition to uh 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 Sarge, uh Raymond Williams in here. Um you gave him some big shoes or he volunteered the big shoes. I, I don't know. So, so, so he Sarge, volunteer. He had so, a choice. <laughs> <laughs> so so Sarge, man, talk you know, talk to me about this process, man. Like, like yeah, you enjoying life, you stressed out. Like how's it feel to be like the, the man like the you know, I mean the man. I, I can tell you, uh, and first how, of all, how is it working with TK? You know what I mean? How is it working with TK? Little, little of you guys cannot tell, we are cousins. Uh, if you cannot see it, we are actually family. Uh, so that's been the biggest thing. Um, and I'm talking about from him introducing me to my first cigar in 09, all the way to now with all these ideas and these great platforms that we are coming up with. So that's how all of that came into play. Um, my thing now is that, like I've always told TK, from the very first Black Smoke, from the very first filming on Stovic TV, to whatever it is, I got your back. And I just now got to the platform to where I'm now retired from over 26 years in the Army. So now, this is nothing to me to handle. Thank you for your service, bro. Thank you for your service. Appreciate you. Hey John, hey John, none of that, bro. We, we, hey, I'm, a, I'm a Marine. I'm about to send everybody else to the to the waiting room. Like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you know I love my you man. Too, you know, that's my family. <laughs> Candy, you gotta go family. by the clock, Candy. Just because, like, you see, <laughs> bro, bro. Even though you know you rode with the the Water Boys, we we ain't gonna hate on you. We still love you. <laughs> But wow, yeah, but, okay. but Rockstar, but Rockstar, that's what it is, man. Um, like I said, it's, this has been something I've been waiting to do for a long time. It's just been the process that I've been away doing the military duty. So now it's to the point to now, this is doing something that I always wanted to do in the first place. I'm just like TK. I got inspired by it and just figure out how can we change the culture? How can we make it more, more suitable and more noticeable for what the stuff that we do as, you know, black smokers? And in this process, I'm gonna tell you straight up, man, the numbers don't lie. From from 13, when we started with Stogie TV, late 13 until now, the platform for black smokers have been phenomenal. You used to be surprised of the products that are being 
being, you know, produced and also being sponsored and also being shown in numbers and sales or whatever based off of black smokers. And this is how the turnaround started. Like he goes back to saying with Stogie TV, when you have some of these other guys come in, they come to one of these cigar lounges and see that they're selling more cigars in one event at that one particular time that they're selling in a two months based off of the black community, that should tell you something. So now we're just taking it to a different level. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. How, so how's the ride been for you, man? How's it working with TK, man? I mean, I know you say you cousins, man, but it, I, like uh, our brains are our brains are damn near similar on some of the stuff. There are two, two o'clock in the morning. There are three fourteen clock, you know, three fourteen a.m. You know, phone calls in the morning. Hey, TK, what about this idea? What about this? Hey, did we get this done? You know, were we tracking that we had this many sales? Like, this is the stuff that we do, and it's it's. It's more than an honor. This is more than something in an honor, man. This is, this is love. This is family. And I've yeah. been supporting him, like I said, from day one, you know, regardless of being behind the scenes. Now I get to step out a little bit, you know, no paparazzi and stuff like that. This is the face of Black Smoke, which is TK. I'm, I'm, I'm still behind the scenes. Word, man. I get, I get it, man. That's, that's, uh, man, 20, I can only imagine. Um, so I, I, obviously I wasn't, very heavy into you know um the cigar community in 2013 um i actually had my first smoke when my my daughter was uh uh, conceived it was like hey you having a girl hey let's go smoke type thing so that's when i started smoking about and she's 16 now so about 15 years ago um uh, about about 16 years ago ish Uh, and uh uh, i'm I'm definitely i'm definitely astonished about how how much i hear um the black community in, in particular has grown uh black women yeah, for for one ha, has oh, grown to them, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and and of course, you know, this is this is a uh, Black History Month, you know, so we're gonna we're gonna pay some homage to that, uh, of course. Well, that's a that's another significance about us having it now at, as as well because it is Black History Month, mm-hmm. you know, and we don't have to run into the fact of normally having it Labor Day weekend in September based off of that stuff. We're taking it away from that type of crowd or that type of environment because now is the point of knowing that hey listen this is something that's being acknowledged during the right time of the year as well yeah for sure for sure so tk man uh, tk so i think i think last last year i, I it might have been in january um uh, has it always been in the first few months of the year or, or, or like your first year when was it it was in september during labor day weekend so I changed it because I got tired of dodging hurricanes. Oh yeah, that is hurricane season for my. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good or bad. So it is uh, February, and ironically, or not ironically, but uh, strategically, uh, Black History Month. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The, the, hey, 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 TK man. I also noticed. Um, um, so I went to TPE a couple weeks ago. Um, I talked to uh, you know, Caldwell. It seems like you work very closely with Caldwell. Like, how's that relationship with you? And how is that a pretty good, um, uh, how's you guys' relationship and how'd that get started? Oh, Caldwell is off the chain. Great guy, great individual. Um, he is eclectic. Um, definitely not your average guy. I mean, he was uh, a featured sponsor of Black Smoke Miami. He saw the vision and he's like, you're right. This is, this is the future. If you want to sustain in the, in the cigar industry, the black culture is it. The black dollar is sustaining the entire, it holds, maintains, and is the reason why the cigar industry is alive. So he jumped on board immediately, and he's from Miami. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a straight-up Miami boy. Oh, I, oh man, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that speaks volumes right there. From what I understand, I'm not from Miami, but from what I understand, that, that, that speaks volumes. For sure. Great guy. Phenomenal guy. So I see Cliff, I see Cliff jumped in the building. What's going on, Cliff? Representing uh, uh Black Star Line. What's going on, sir? Man, just chilling, man. Packing up, man. Agree. We're on the road tomorrow, man. We're in Philly, so. So I just jumped on, show you some love real quick, man, because we're on our way to Philly. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. So yeah. TK, man, like how how is it working? Like, are you exclusive exclusively? I mean, obviously, Caldwell is not uh, you know, a person of color. AJ may be considered a person of color because you know, Fernandez. But are you exclusively uh, for the black culture or are you open to, you know, cigar culture wide? Cigar culture worldwide, worldwide. But I have an emphasis on people of color. 
Understood. The rock Understood. Star. I'll yeah. say something about that since I'm the white guy on here. <laughs> <laughs> I look at. I, <laughs> wait, 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 but but are you are you? Are you, you really white? Are, are you, uh, I don't. I don't think you can be considered yeah. white. Are you though? Okay. With white. that said, <laughs> another guy, Rob, you can come to the barbecue, brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but where where I was going with it, you know. It's it's okay to be the talking guy. It's okay. I've been around the culture for probably 10, 15 years within the industry side as well. And it doesn't matter where I go, whether it be you, Rockstar, Leo, when I've seen him literally across the country, when I've seen Jameson across the country, Alicia across the country, and TK and I've run to each other, good Lord knows how many different cities. Right. <laughs> but to his but the point he's making is I've never felt like the white guy in the room, so to speak. The black culture in the cigar, the black cigar culture is one that's very welcoming. <clears throat> and I think a lot of white guys and white people in general are intimidated, but mm. there's never a reason to be because I can show up at any cigar lounge anywhere in the country, predominantly any group of ethnicity. I'm welcomed with open arms because you come in, you act like a real person, but you know, TK has never seen me and gone, oh God, it's Rob, it's him. It's, hey, it's my pal from here. Say hi, we'll do whatever, we'll light it up. You know, and that's one of the things that I appreciate about everybody on this call, because I go anywhere in the country and hang out and I've got friends no matter where I go. And it that's supersedes right. color. It supersedes race. It supersedes religion. And that's one of the things that, you know, keeps me around. But it's one of the things I appreciate, you know, and from a white guy, I got to say thanks, you know, because there's a lot of places I could go and feel intimidated, but nobody's ever made me feel that way. Rob, the only right. thing intimidating about here, here, here. Is the damn Mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> that was for you, Candacy. <laughs> so that's my two cents, but you know, because of your question about black smoke and what it's looking towards, I've been to it and nobody's ever thought of a thing about me being there. And you know, I I think Folks like me should do a better job within the white community going, people, get over yourselves. Because there's a lot of white sm cigar smokers that still have a lot of preconceptions. I won't even say judgment. They have preconceptions about what a situation is going to be like. So it keeps them from opening the door and going in. Yeah, for sure. So, so that, that's a good point, Rob. I, so, so I've had um, um, uh, Steve Saka on a, a, a few weeks ago, and he absolutely recognized the black culture or, or the black movement in the cigar culture or whatever you want to call it. He absolutely recognized. And, and, uh, you know, Steve's a straight up dude, man, you know, so he, he's a straight up dude. If you haven't met him, he, he, he tell you what it is, how it is. No, no YOLO. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to use the language I want to use because it's my platform on YouTube, but no F's given from, from Steve for sure. For sure. All day, all day. Mm hmm so TK, man, I mean, you've grown every year for the past five years. Do you ever see this getting too big? And, and if it does, uh, do you see this um, pivoting to something uh, uh, bigger than you you thought it would be? Like, like, like what's like what's next steps for Black Smoke Miami? What's next steps um, for uh, Black 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 Smoke Magazine? What's next step for Black Smoke Social? Like, you 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 got the you know you got it on lock. What's next step? It is. It's a lot. It's a lot. There's. A lot coming down the pipeline. I'm not stopping no time soon. It, it's trust when I say it's going down. Yeah. Yeah. So, TK, you, you ever, you ever, uh, do you have a vision of uh, coming out with a, 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 a TK slash AJ cigar or, or whatever, or your own line <laughs> or whatever? Or Nicaraguan, Nicar they smoke this TK from Nicaragua? Like, do you have any aspirations of coming out with a stick? Yes. My have first you not cigar. Not smoke this cigar? Right, right. My first cigar was with Karen Berger. Oh, was, I didn't uh, know that. I'm sorry. I didn't, man, I see. I feel bad and do my homework enough. Then, like, what you slipping? That's all right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, that's what that's that was, that was, that hey, a lot of people don't know this, so that's what it's for. So, my naiveness is, is making you win. So, yeah. <laughs> so, that was a blessing to work with her, and of course, work with AJ. Um, I yes, I will be releasing a new cigar. So, so you have, you have cigars out now. Like, what so, what do you have out now? Um, I'm not releasing it until Black Smoke. Yes. Oh, yeah. Man. No worries. I, I got I, I got a box for you. So, 
So like, can we, can we get some deep? Like, who rolls it? Like, who, you know, like what what comes ah! it through? Not yet. Okay. 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 That's good. Yeah. Uh, we'll let it surprise us. We'll let it surprise us. That works. That works for sure. No doubt. For sure. So Sarah, I see you join Sarah. What's going on, Sarah Saunders? Hello. How you doing today? I'm alive. Bless that's blessed. Already. <laughs> that's that's blessed. Already. I just have the one. Um, I actually just moved into my new place. So excuse the mess and the way that I, you know, my background is devoid of anything. This is actually my first smoke in the new spot. So off there of we go. There we go. Hey, All man, right. But then when I realized that it was TK coming on, I was like, oh, let me uh, definitely get on. Because <laughs> I met TK. At least you're not at work. Oh, yeah, I that's don't even do that no more. <laughs> I don't even do that no more. So that's the funny true. thing is, is I now work from home. Look at God. I've, I've left the clinical side of the medical field and I'm back on the administrative side. So I no longer have to deal with the dangers that you guys saw my other job put me in or hearing me tell children Merry Christmas and leave me the hell alone. Wow. Yeah, for sure. I know that for sure. Wow. But TK, I, um, I met him at a Miami event and he actually made sure that I made it to the next spot of the event. And that was actually the first time I ever got to have one of his cigars. And TK, he's been a stand-up brother ever since I met him. And I'm actually happy that he's on. I'm happy that Black Smoke is coming back around in his favor. I see him and I follow him and I, you know, watching the, the lounge come up and everything else. Because I remember the first lounge, it opened, but then COVID hit. And, yeah. you know, he, he kind of like had to rebuild. So when I saw that you were having him on, I was like, you know what? I got to get on, show some support, let him know that he got people that's been rocking with him for a few years that is happy that he's still doing what people doubted his ability for. Yeah. I thank you, Queen. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. Bless so TK, bless man, let's let, let so can you give us a name of the cigar you're dropping from my uh, on Black uh Black Smoke Miami? Bro, can you give us a name the go. name? Bro, let it go. You dig it. Oh, you dig it. Hey, you know hey, 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 man. Hey, I need I need, he, I need to go. He's an investigative he's journal, a man. He's an investigative uh, journal. I'm with it. Man. I'm all. with it. People want to know. The people want to know. The people want to know. I'm trying to get a cigar watch on TV exclusive. That's all. He, you know, I'm, I'm uh, nah, he, he try, that's, here it that's is exactly right here. What's happening. He's trying to get that exclusive. He's trying to get that exclusive. Right. It happened here first. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. TK right here. Uh, yeah, you got to come to Black uh, Smoke Miami to get it. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. There you go. Oh, he got that cigar out there engraved on it. Look, man, when I tell you, TK, I, I went to the lounge. And the brother was putting the work in for real. I mean, he went from packing up cigars that he had to do an event to cleaning up stuff. Uh, I mean, it was overwhelming me. I'm like, oh my God. And then had enough time, like, come on out here. We sit out. We're going to wait till your birthday. We're going to bring it in. And we just sat out there <laughs> drinking smoke. I had the opportunity to have one of his sticks and him to drop jewels on me. It was, it was. It was definitely a blessing. I'm telling you, I was getting teary eyed. I was like, "This is what I'm talking about." You know, Great money to her, to, her, to her entire. That's what you cry, baby. She made sure to do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But that's right. the thing. TK's hospitality. TK's yeah. hospitality is like it's on stupid. point. It's stupid. It's on stupid. point. I mean, because mind team. you, I was at I was team. at this Miami event by myself. I didn't have nobody. Didn't know nobody. TK saw that I was by myself. And actually, he saw that somebody had stolen my, my lighter out of my grab bag. And he gave me his lighter, That's right. his torch from That's the right. bag, and then made sure that I had everything else that I needed the rest of that day. And That's right. as, as That's like right. my initial introduction to the cigar world and the cigar culture, and even a step further, Black cigar culture, I didn't know that that type of gentleman existed in that world. Uh, oh wow! Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I did. I had no clue. But CK set the precedence of what to expect. He did from people, especially my black men and brothers, as I travel and as I smoke. CK did that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. 
it, yeah. look, we were, Susie and I was, you know, leaving to go to our different hotels. His friend made sure that we got to our destinations. He trailed us each place. I mean, mm. and he was like, I mean, miles away. And I thought it was like very commendable for him to do that. And it was late too. I was like, yeah, we got- It's like the top flight security of the cigar world, man. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> top flight. <laughs> hey, hey, TK, well, man, you got, you got, TK, you got a lot of love in the room, bro. But it, 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 it uh, uh, it, it sounds like um, uh, hospitality is very important to you. Like, how I see you, Kia. Give me a second. Um, like, do you think hospitality is is, is pretty important in the cigar world? And I guess the two part question. Let me think of how I'm going to ask it without sounding negative. Is there something as you travel the world, um, the U.S., the world, going to these lounges, you know, Stogie TV and all that? What's the one thing um, that maybe you would like to see more of or improve on in the cigar uh, brick and mortar or, the, or whatever it may be uh, as you were traveling the world going to these lounges? Real simple answer. Treat people right. Yeah. Treat people right. That's yeah. all it is. Treat people right. We, we, there's not enough of it in this world. Treat people right. It's it's no secret sauce. That's it. Treat people right. Excuse, excuse the noise, guys. I hear you, man. You 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 love me, I hear you. I hear you. One moment. He, he in Miami for real. Yeah. He in Miami, for real. <laughs> I'm in the room, man. Get that late night. He's going to get that late night cunk sandwich real quick. <laughs> Yes, yes. Or, or street tacos. <laughs> street tacos. Listen, it's really simple. People think that it's it's uh it's it's not rocket science. Treat people right. That's all it is. If how hard is that? Just treat people right. It's just that simple. You know, we live in a very nasty world, a very disgusting world. People are, you don't know what's going through someone's mind nowadays. It's, uh, just treat people right. That, that's, that's all I can say, treat people right. Um, listen, I have an event I have to go to. <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, T, TK, give, give, me, give, me, give, me, TK, give me one more minute, because Kia, Kia had her hand up. Kia had her hand, go ahead, Kia. Oh, yes, for Dr. Watts, yes, Dr. Watts, anything, yes. <laughs> where, where does the doctor come from, bro? <laughs> appreciate it though listen i just wanted to share real quick you know appreciate you tk for giving us this space to shine and shine a spotlight on us those that work hard my sister queen alicia mcgee and her brand and conscious cigars and and and, yes. and my nomination for sister of the leaf man we spoke uh back circling back on that how did how did that happen i mean seriously the people recognize those who are doing grand things in this industry. And I definitely, yes, definitely uh, appreciate the nomination. I woke up that morning and saw everybody saying congratulations. I was like, yo, how did this happen? Who did this? <laughs> but it's the people, <laughs> it's the people, it's the right. people, the culture. And I definitely uh, appreciate everybody's support, love, uh, rocking with me, rocking with Conscious Cigars, rocking with our queens, man, shining a light on us. I appreciate you sharing your space with us, bro. And I'll see you next weekend. I greatly journey. appreciate the queen. Sure. Thank so, 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 so Kia, Kia got Kia got nomination for Sister of the Leaf. Conscious got cigar uh, 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 nomination for uh, cigar of the uh, of the year. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Hey, John, one minute, John. One, quick, keep it quick, John. Thank you. I just wanted to say, you know, I I kept hearing his name, uh, TK, and, and it was from every aspect of the actual culture, from lounges, manufacturers, owners, etc. Everybody was like, he was the man to know in the cigar industry. We actually connected and I had planned out, you know, maybe an hour or two hours to actually go and visit with him. We spent like five hours. Yeah, we did. <laughs> in the lounge as he was building it out. Absolutely beautiful. You know, I mean, I haven't smoked that much since I was at PCA. I'll just put it like that. Okay. And out of everybody I've met, in the actual industry he is so welcoming and forthcoming and a, a true brother you know I, i'm i'm throwing my own event and literally this man 
has no qualms on letting you know everything that is involved. You know, that, that just makes everybody better. And I can't thank him enough. So thank you, TK, brother. thanks, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, the you, right? TK, you got you got you got a lot of love. You got a lot of love in here from coast to coast, brother. I appreciate you. So we got we got TK, Tobacco Kennedy, Mr. Black Smoke Miami, Black Smoke Magazine. This this is the man, the founder. Uh, um, look him up on Instagram, Black Smoke Miami, Black Smoke Magazine. Um, uh, thank you for taking the time, bro. TK, man, I appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much, All right, TK, everyone. Hey. Love, blessings, love, blessings, love. And blessings. Hey man, hey good good luck on hosting Tootsie tonight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. Uh, we're doing a black smoke promo here. Yes. And I gotta get on the microphone and um uh do what I gotta do. There you go. And you But it's not at Tootsie's, it's not at Tootsie's. <laughs> Hey, TK, I appreciate you, man. I, I might see you in a couple of weekends. Uh, uh, I got some personal things going on. I, I might not be available. I got some personal things, but uh, I hope to see you in a couple of weekends, man. I, I definitely much appreciate you, sir. Thanks for You'll taking the time to come on, man, and, 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 and enjoy your night, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you all, and thank you, Cigar Rockstar. The only, one and only Cigar Rockstar for all that you do, my good brother. Rockstar, where to go, all. I love you hey. all. Thank you for taking the time out. Blessings to all of you. That's it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep, keep all right. How all that acknowledgement came about because you out there grinding and you ain't stopped one time, coffee or not. Word, word. Appreciate you, Sarge, man. Appreciate you, Sarge. Yo.